Hi, I'm Linton Leonard, and welcome to another edition of Focus, brought to you by the Department of Disaster Management. Social media. What is social media? According to the Wikipedia, social media includes web-based and mobile technologies used to turn communication into interactive dialogue. It continues to say that people obtain information, education, news, and other data from electronic media and print media. Social media are distinct from industrial and traditional media, such as newspapers, television, and film. They are relatively inexpensive and accessible to enable anyone, even private individuals. To publish or access information compared to in in industrial media when generally requires significant resources to public information. On our show today, we'll be discussing social media in disaster management. But we can get more into it after we return from these short messages. Knowing which information mediums to tap into is a very important part of being prepared. Throughout the hurricane season, preparedness tips will be aired on all radio and television stations. In addition, persons are welcome to log on to the department's website at www.bviddm.com for the latest press releases and weather releases as it pertains to impending weather. Please note that when there is an imminent threat to the BVI, the department's emergency page will be activated. Contained on this page will be releases, preparedness tips, and situation reports about the storm's impact on the territory. Help secure your family's safety by keeping abreast of changing weather conditions. The Department of Disaster Management is located at number 3 Whaling Road, McNamara. It is home to the government department responsible for the territory's overall disaster management program. Our mission is to reduce the loss of life and property attributable to disasters by ensuring that adequate preparedness and mitigation measures, response and recovery mechanisms are established to counteract the impact of natural and technological hazards. For all your disaster preparedness needs, feel free to contact the DDM at our new number, 468-4200, to speak with one of our knowledgeable staff. That's 468-4200. Or you can visit our website at www.bviddm.com. The Department of Disaster Management, your life-saving connection. Welcome back to Focus. Almost every day and everywhere you go, you hear people talking about that they've been a part of a discussion or they've been on a social media platform, and you hear them talking about how they've been in a discussion that while something was happening in another country, and they've been using Facebook or Twitter or some sort of social media. Uh, today, we'll be talking about disaster management in the social media age, and with me is Saskia Barnes of Barnes PR. Ms. Barnes, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. It's my pleasure to have you here. About, tell me a little bit about yourself and the company that you work for. As you indicated, I'm Saskia Barnes um, of Barnes PR. I started Barnes PR boutique public relations firm in 2009. Prior to that, I was an information officer with Government Information Services, where I did have the opportunity to work with disaster management. Mm -hmm. I also worked with the Ministry of Natural Resources and, la and Labor, I'm sorry, and lastly with the Water and Sewage Department. And in 2009, I leaped out into the private sector and Barnes PR was founded. Okay, so in your own words, what does social media mean to you or, or how, did it, how does it play such an integral part or role in your, in your public relations? Social media, um, it means a lot to me. I'm very excited about um, social media. I think it's, um, we're right now at a crossroads or perhaps we've already crossed um, the road in terms of communication and information management. Mm -hmm. And social media really allows us to have a wider conversation where more stakeholders can participate in the conversation. Prior to the age of social media, most of the conversation, most um, information was disseminated to consumers, mm -hmm. meaning um, publishers who, um, editors and so on, they spoke directly to consumers by simply sending out um, newspapers, radio shows, television shows, and so forth. Now with the advent of social media um, and 
we being in the age of social media, the consumers now have a voice that they can articulate and they can broadcast, they can engage and they can share information across the internet. And as you said in your opening, have discussions with persons all around the world. So at first it was little or no interaction. Pretty much. So now who uses social media? Who can use social media? Um, anyone can use um, social media. Anyone can use social media. Um, I note your definition of social media in the beginning. Um, and that's a very comprehensive definition of social media. But I'd like to offer also um, a slightly less complex definition of okay. social media. Um, oftentimes when we talk about social media, persons think about Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Flickr, mm -hmm. and the different platforms. Okay. It's important to understand that social media, it's a, bit, it's a lot bigger than that. Okay. Um, it is the reason for having those types of platforms. Mm -hmm. Social media allows consumers or users to create and generate information for sharing, engaging, um, having you know discussions and collaborating. So the mm -hmm. important aspect of it, I think that it's um, very important for us to remember. It's it's consumer driven. It's um, user driven. The user now has the opportunity to articulate um, whatever it is that they'd like to share. Okay. Well, you started touching on some of the benefits of it, but can you tell me some more of the benefits of social media? Ah, uh, the benefits are are wide um, in terms of you have the opportunity to have a much larger audience with um, social media. Um, <coughs> if you, there's a good, um, there's a good, um, there's a good quote, um, you know, you were familiar with what uh, happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Yes. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. What okay. happened in Twitter, on Twitter, stays on Google forever. <laughs> Meaning whatever you put out there, I mean, it's literally, it's out there and it's mm -hmm. out there forever. And that's something that we should always be mindful of. It's an opportunity to reach your audience directly. It's an opportunity to engage your audience, and it's an opportunity to get feedback, immediate um, feedback from your audience. Those are, I think, immediate and the most crucial benefits of social media. You consider that a benefit or is that a curse, Bec knowing that you have information out there at all times? Um, in terms of disaster management, okay. I think it is, it is definitely a benefit. It is definitely a benefit to have um, social media in disaster management. Okay, so how is it possible for us to use disaster, um, the social media in disaster management? How is this possible? Or how, how, how can we apply it? I think the Department of Disaster Management has already gone out there um, with a Facebook page. Um, that's very important. The thing to also remember about social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter, they're already search, search engine optimized, meaning if your website might not be the best website, if you don't have the best SEO um, mm -hmm. you know, operation um, on the back end of your website, mm -hmm. if you have information on Facebook or Twitter, if anyone that's you know Googling or searching, um, they can easily find your information because it's already search engine optimized. In terms of disaster management and its uses, I think um, we can look at it in three phases. Um, the time of normalcy, um, pre-disaster. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity for you to share information on a consistent basis mm -hmm. with your audience. Um, if it's you know during the time of our hurricane season, um, a weekly update on you know good measures to protect your family Tips. and so forth. Those are good and simple, easy um, ways that we can w use social media in disaster manage management pre-disaster. Okay. Now, during a disaster, um, social media can also be very helpful in getting information directly um, to affected areas. And post-disaster, it also helps us in terms of um, assessing um, damage, um, finding individuals, um, I think it was the tornado that happened in the States. I think it was last last year. Last year. Um, there was a very good article on time.com where persons talked about finding their family members because someone started a Facebook page mm -hmm. um, to cover the recovery efforts. Right. And they couldn't get in contact with their um, son or their brother for a while, but they actually found him. Um, someone took a picture of him and posted it on Okay. Facebook and you know updated the family that he was safe and he is okay. Um, we saw it happen as well with the Haiti earthquake right, right, as well as that. Japan. So those are some benefits um, of social media in disaster management pre-disaster. Um, we can warn persons about the, dis the impending um, disaster. Um, during disasters we can communicate with individuals in terms of you know what to do. Um, 
you know, what's going on, mm -hmm. the changes in, in the weather, and post-disaster in terms of recovery and trying to get information to the public and trying to bring the community back to normalcy. Yeah, I'm trying to put it all into perspective. Um, during mm -hmm. a disaster or an event, who posts information? Well, this or who would? Well, this is the thing about social media as well. Mm -hmm. Whether you post or not, in terms mm -hmm. of whether you take um, control of your information, mm -hmm. the consumer is going to post. So that's why I always say it's much better for okay. organizations to get ahead okay. of their um, consumers or um, some of their stakeholders, because you have an opportunity to set the tone and to be the authority. Mm -hmm. on the information that's going out there. For instance, um, going back to the same example of disaster management, posting information regularly. Mm -hmm. um, after you <coughs> keep on, you know, you post for a while, you provide good solid content for users, persons mm -hmm. that like your page. You, of course, you are the authority on disaster management in the right. Virgin Islands, and you should be that person and posting. You have followers exactly. for that reason. And um, if I'm in the Virgin Islands, I should know to automatically go to the disaster management right. Facebook page to get good and credible information. Mm -hmm. As I indicated in terms of the definition of social media, it's user-generated information. Mm -hmm. So in terms of having accurate and really good information, this is why, it's, to me, it's very important that disaster management takes the lead on that and makes sure that you know everyone knows that they are the authority in terms of you know, um, supplying that information. Okay, well, well, this is a question I want to ask. With the advent of social media, or since social media came on stream, does, would that replace other platforms, other public relations tools, or would it just assist or help? I don't think that it should replace other public relations tools, like newspapers, flyers, um, brochures, and so forth. I think it can assist um, other public relations tools. For example, um, this television show that mm -hmm. we're doing, right. if the Department of Disaster Management has a YouTube channel, this can easily be uploaded to you YouTube mm -hmm. and shared with everyone. It can also be, you can send a quick little link on your Facebook um, fan page to let everyone know that you just updated some information on social media and disaster mm -hmm. management, and persons can go and view um, that information. So, you know, y you help the community by broadcasting as much information as possible. Mm -hmm. Whereas, say for instance, um, you got the information if you bought the newspaper or something like that. This is a free option. It helps you to reach um, a wide audience as right. well. And I think especially for us here in the Virgin Islands where um, we have a lot of persons that come and live here in the territory and we also have Virgin Islanders that are abroad to be on the internet and to participate mm -hmm. in social media. Um, it helps all of us to get information to mm -hmm. the parties that are concerned. Well, what, if, what about people who <coughs> doesn't utilize the service of Facebook or Twitter? Um, I think that's why the other mediums are still very good okay. and should still, should still be used. I don't think social media should be used in any campaign alone. Mm -hmm. um, I think it should be in collaboration with other, with other media. Thank you back. Yeah. Okay, I have another question. Um, if okay, well, the DDM has a Facebook page, and, and we do have a website. I like what you said that maybe what we should do is link link it or just put a post out there and say that we just updated our website because our, these shows are posted on the website, mm -hmm. and so I think that's something we can utilize. Because I was going to ask you how can disaster management, or how DDM can utilize the social media. So you have any other addition that you can assist us in? I think. It, Having the um, information <coughs> on your um, website, that's great. Mm -hmm. But I think perhaps if the department, um, I don't know if you have a YouTube channel, mm -hmm. um, that would be good as well in terms of hosting all of those videos. Because the thing, again, is if um, your website isn't really, um, isn't it, the SEO on your website in terms of persons being able to easily find it, mm -hmm. um, they can easily find a YouTube video. Um, you can tag um, your videos, Bridge Virgin Islands, disaster management, and so on. So it really opens up um, to your audience. And again, I think that's very important. Um, say, for instance, you know, your mom living in the States and you're here in the Virgin Islands for five, six years or something like that, so that they too can be well informed of what's going on in terms of um, disaster management and the way that um, we're handling and managing all of that in the territory. Okay. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we're going to be talking some more about the social media and the social media age, sorry, and disaster management. 
With me is Saskia Barnes, and we'll be right back after these messages. The Department of Disaster Management is located at number 3 Whalen Road, McNamara. It is home to the government department responsible for the territory's overall disaster management program. Our mission is to reduce the loss of life and property attributable to disasters by ensuring that adequate preparedness and mitigation measures, response and recovery mechanisms are established to counteract the impact of natural and technological hazards. For all your disaster preparedness needs, feel free to contact the DDM at our new number, 468-4200, to speak with one of our knowledgeable staff. That's 468-4200. Or you can visit our website at www.bviddm.com. The Department of Disaster Management, your life-saving connection. Knowing which information mediums to tap into is a very important part of being prepared. Throughout the hurricane season, preparedness tips will be aired on all radio and television stations. In addition, persons are welcome to log on to the department's website at www.bviddm.com for the latest press releases and weather releases as it pertains to impending weather. Please note that when there is an imminent threat to the BVI, the department's emergency page will be activated. Contained on this page will be releases, preparedness tips, and situation reports about the storm's impact on the territory. Help secure your family's safety by keeping abreast of changing weather conditions. Welcome back to Focus. Today we're talking about the social media age, or the age of social media, and disaster management, and how we can intermingle them and make it work for us here in the Virgin Islands. Again, I have with me Saskia Barnes of Barnes PR, and she's telling us all the benefits and how good social media platform can work, or all the platforms, not necessarily platform, but social media age can work in disaster management. I have a question for you. Um, if you were to give a scenario for better understanding of how social media can be used during an emergency situation, can you give us a little uh, a little situation or a little just so we can get it a better picture of how we can utilize it? Sure, I think it was um, it perhaps were we had some serious rains. I think it was in 2010. Yes, I believe it was 2000 October October 2010. Um, I live over. Um, at Long Trench, and we didn't have electricity um, almost immediately when the storm really started approaching. Uh -huh. I was listening to the radio, and you know we were getting the updates and so forth from the radio. But um, via my BlackBerry mm -hmm. um, is when I, in my opinion, started getting the real updates of what was really going on because um, persons were really posting throughout the territory what was going on right. in their neighborhood. Um, it's when you know when you actually see a photo of the water that was coming down through Parcel, you really realize um, the magnitude of the situation. Because I'm up on the hill, yes, the wind is blowing and so forth and so on, but to actually see um, the water gushing out, I am not supporting persons going out um, in the middle of disasters to take photos or anything like that. But it does happen and people share that information. I think then you kind of get, I got a little bit more of an understanding of the real seriousness and the impact that was happening as it was happening mm -hmm. um, during the storm. And in an instance like that, um, I think disaster management um, did a very good job in terms of updating the public on mm -hmm. where the storm, in terms of tracking the storm. Mm -hmm. And you know, just keep on continuously providing the information of you know, what not to do and so on. I do recall disaster management um, from your Facebook page doing that. Yeah, um, I, I know, like I mentioned earlier that DDM does have a Facebook page, but in I think two of the most popular social media platforms are like Facebook and Twitter. Mm -hmm. And I know they're powerful tools where everybody uses them, they're up to the minute, and you can, if you watch SportsCenter mm -hmm. or TNT, the, the as sports it stars, as it happened, they're, they're tweeting and then it goes up right away. Um, and that, that shows how, how, how magnificent or how powerful it is. But um, let me give you another example as well. Yeah. It is in Disaster Digest, um, the 2011 edition of that Disaster Digest. Uh -huh. um, I can't remember which earthquake um, it was in San Francisco. 
and um, in the Twitter office, they started getting all of these feeds um, coming in um, earthquake. Mm -hmm. um, persons were just hashtagging earthquake, and then the topic earthquake started trending, and they couldn't figure out why it was starting to trend. Mm -hmm. They couldn't figure this out, and like 10 minutes later, they started um, having the office started shaking. So miles south of their office, the earthquake had already started, mm. and then the earthquake traveled. Um, but persons were getting the, um, were you know disseminating, letting persons know that mm. the earthquake just happened in such and such town. And the USGA, y yes, yeah, they USGA. always USGS, they always send out information um, almost as it happens. Right. So Real that's time. yeah. So if you are on Twitter or you are on Facebook, um, and that's largely how most persons get their information or get their news now no one is really waiting for you know you can't wait for the weekend paper right, right. or the evening news and so on so i think it's it's very important um for businesses but particularly disaster management to really you know get on board with social me media it uh -huh. really assists um residents in terms of getting information okay and i, I was saying earlier i we do have a facebook page um and i'm not advertising for facebook or twitter but in your opinion or from your own experience, which one would you think would be more effectively used for, di for um, disaster management? I think um, based on the dynamics of the Virgin Islands right now, Facebook it would be um, the better option. Okay. Um, in terms of we have most of the population that's on Facebook, um, there are particular pages um, that were created in the territory by different mm -hmm. persons that are extremely popular. Um, so I think that would be the better platform for um, disaster management. And uh, I, I can also attest to the fact that we have followers from all over the world and we get friend, we get friend um, requests every day, all day. And so I am sure that it is very important what you put out there as well. Mm -hmm. Because as you say... It, it what you put out there stays there forever. Okay. So, so now I want to know a little bit more about Facebook or Twitter and if you know anything about the history of them and what they were intending to do whether it was just supposed to be something for friends to communicate or if this is the purpose it was made for um, well I think we all can't recall the um, the movie the Facebook um, yeah, it um, recalled how Mark Zuckerberg and his partners mm -hmm. started um, Facebook um, where it was initially um, just for college students and then it was opened up I think in 2005 um, to the rest of the world. Um, prior to 2005, you had to have a college um, email address to actually get on, and at that time it was the Facebook. Um, mm -hmm. And now it's just Facebook, and we know recently um, they're making attempts to go public, so the company will be um, developing. Mm -hmm. um, I can give you some interesting statistics about yeah. some social media platforms. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, approximately 13 hours of video is uploaded to YouTube every minute. Wow. 13 hours um, and that's calculated um, to be you would need 425 years to watch all of the video <laughs> and <laughs> that's presently on and YouTube you YouTube can pull you in <laughs> and suck you in, <laughs> suck you in. <laughs> um, with Houston recently passed and mm. over the weekend apparently tweets were going out 30,000 mm. 30, tweets were going out per minute Wow! just talking about her death um, there are 100 million YouTube videos that are viewed every day mm. And, you know, you hear all of these statistics and how can disaster management or how can your organization now become one of those videos and have that opportunity to really be seen and be heard and your information be disseminated um, in that platform um, to the rest of the world. They are... 3,600 million photos that are archived on Flickr, which mm. is a photo sharing platform. Right. And there are um, 5,000 million minutes spent per day on Facebook. If Facebook was a country, um, it would be <laughs> the eighth largest country in the world. So, you know, a lot of people think that, you know, this is a phase, it's a fad. It's really not a phase or a fad. It's really a fundamental shift in the way that we are communicating right. as human because beings. Because it's real time is, as it happened. Now, the, the, the downside of this, though, is that who's reputable? Whose mm -hmm. information is reputable? Because, um, as you say, um, Whitney Houston passed last weekend, recently, and um, lots of information was circulated. Mm -hmm. And not all were true, mm -hmm. and, but a lot of them were true. And so it's good to have followers 
who know that your information will be reputable. And that's why it's very important for you to always kind of get out. And get ahead. Yes, and get ahead and present that information. Somewhere in terms of utilizing social media that businesses and organizations fall down mm -hmm. on, um, we want to capitalize on the, the amount of users on Facebook and Twitter. Mm -hmm. And the important thing in terms of capitalizing is understanding it's a two-way conversation. Mm -hmm. Persons aren't interested in being spoken to. You have right. to really engage users um, in order to keep them um, with you and to make sure that they're following you. So you always have to find good and creative ways to engage users. If you're not doing well, if the Department of Disaster Management doesn't handle um, some disaster well, you're going to hear about it immediately um, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And while some persons might um, use that example as a way you know, to try to stay off of Facebook and so forth, I would not advise it um, because I think that you do need to engage your community and you also need to hear about what you're not doing well um, mm -hmm. in order to improve. So I think it's a collaborative effort that can be had for the betterment of disaster management in the territory. Okay, but with social media and DDM using social media, and other people abusing the social media. Mm -hmm. How do we reach those who, who have been blocked from abusing the social, uh, this platform, these platforms? When you say blocked, what do you mean? Um, like I said, there are people who abuse the system, mm -hmm. that they have been restricted from using this service. Are you talking about in terms of businesses and organizations? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yes, that would be. Um, an issue. Yeah. Um, the next stage I think that we are evolving into in terms of technology is apps. Um, mm. I get all of my news as it happens on my iPhone. I get them on my Blackberry <laughs> as well. Um, so I think instead of going to Facebook and waiting to see um, the CNN channel that I liked um, mm -hmm. giving me the news whenever it happens or whenever they update something, I seem to get a, a, a little bit of an update. So I think mm -hmm. that that's the evolution. Persons might um, abuse it and in their work um, environments, um, perhaps the sites are blocked. Right. And I think that that's understandable, um, but I think it's still necessary um, for organizations to understand and to find a good way of utilizing um, social media in information sharing um, and just in terms of generally getting feedback um, from their stakeholders. Okay. Well, Ms. Barnes, you teach a course at HLSCC. What's the name of that course? The course at HLSCC is Social Media 101 and it is through the college's workforce training mm -hmm. division. Um, we taught it for the first time last year and it was received very well. Mm -hmm. um, I was very glad to see Harney's actually had two persons in the mm -hmm. class and they've now actually gone, um, they've pretty much really dove into um, social media, especially wow. on Twitter. So if someone wants to ask more questions pertaining to what we discussed on this program here, how can they get in touch with you? They can get in contact with me. Um, my office, um, Barnes PR, my telephone number is 495-8552. You can also reach me directly at Saskia, S-A-C-H-K-I-A, at BarnesPR.com. And I also write a blog, um, Life in the PR Lane, at SaskiaBarnes.com. Life in the PR Lane. Okay, but I want to thank you for being with me here today, and it was a pleasure, and I'm sure a lot of people have learned a lot about social media and how it can be used, not just in disaster management, or, but in whatever organization that they work in. And um, I'm sure that you'll be back on my show really soon, because I think this one has hit home to a lot of, a lot of listeners. So who would have thought that in a, a few years ago, how popular social media websites would have actually become? There are millions of people all over the world who use these sites daily. It has actually become a part of their lives. Because social media channels attract so much continental attention and continuously from internet users. This has become a powerful venue for anyone to create interest and traffic. I also want to tell you that DDM has a Facebook. Just search for BVI DDM and add us to get all of our updates. This brings us to the end of another focus. I'm happy that you could have joined us today. Don't forget to tune in to Focus every second and fourth Wednesday on CBN at 9 p.m., every second and fourth Thursday on JTV at 6 p.m., and every second and fourth Saturday on Channel 52 at 7 p.m. 
Focus can also be viewed on www.bviddm.com. So until next time, remember, it is better to prepare and prevent rather than repair and repent. I am Linton Leonard, and thank you for watching us on this episode of Focus, the show that keeps watch for the Virgin Islands community.